everybody. For tuning into PTV World, you are certainly watching World This Morning. Alongside my very well-learned colleague who happens to be on World This Morning for the very first time on the physical set. And she is Miss Hira Mustafa. Hello, Hira. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good morning to all the viewers of PTV World uh, who just tuned into PTV World at the moment. I am filling in for my amazing colleague, Hadra Sati, and good luck to her. Uh, she will be back soon. You will be seeing her soon on the screens. She just says, Shezad, how was your day? I mean, it just started <laughs> and uh, it's uh, Women's Day. We're celebrating. So happy Women's Day to all the women out there who are struggling with their lives, who are facing their work pressure and alongside they're keeping a balance in their family lives. So once again, happy Women's Day to all of you. I think for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, it is a very important day and it's because of the fact that imagine that empowering women will obviously make sure that, you know, that they transcend all of those values, morals and education to our future generations. Having said, you know, let me just, uh, you know, go back to Miss Hira over here. And Hira, first of all, how is it for you to be on the morning show in the first place? Thank you so much for filling in for Hajra because Hajra has gone to attend a conference in Turkey. Right. She must be having a great time. Sure. How do you feel to be here? Well, I feel very energetic and very enthusiastic as always because alongside I have Shahzad Khan, an amazing colleague, full of energy. I must say he's a full package. Wow. So I feel very excited and looking forward to the more episodes of World This Morning. And uh, since Shahzad, it's a uh, Women's Day. So what? how do you feel about it? I mean, um, you know, I'll be very honest over here. So it's because of the fact that imagine that Alhamdulillah, Allah, has blessed me with three lovely daughters Masha. and uh, not just that you know I'll go back uh, a few years as well where I've been blessed with five lovely sisters as well alhamdulillah so I've grown up in a family which is uh, usually female centric you know so right. there are only very few men inside our family mm. and for all of those values which I carry today is because of my mother and my sister so imagine that you know whenever we speak about of any household ladies and gentlemen it's because of the women that you know that they have actually made sure that all of their sons or daughters are going to have those equal rights and uh, whenever we speak about it Hira I think what we really need to kind of focus on is women education you know girls education we need to make sure that we empower them we give them those opportunities right. which our religion promises them True. you know it's not that that we are saying that hey you know what we need to do that because whenever we speak about uh, International Women's Day or Women Day ladies and gentlemen I think it is for everybody to understand that it is us making sure that our future generations for example even if I talk about my daughters over here, that they could go outside, they could strive for excellence, they could do whatever they want to do in life. Right. And all I need to do is, in response, I really need to make sure that I give them, provide them that platform, those opportunities. And having said the so... The freedom, the trust. Yeah, exactly. You need to believe in the women. You exactly. Know? It's exactly like how your family trusts you with exactly. you, know, you coming over here and working and getting that nicer environment and excelling in your life. True. And while we talk about it, ladies and gentlemen, we actually have a small report to share with you on International Women's Day where we're talking about equity, ladies and gentlemen. Please, let's go. Let's take a good look. And once you come back, we have some wonderful guests over here who've been working inside Pakistan to make sure that there's gender equality as well. Let's go. Let's take a look.
And what a soulful and beautiful report to watch uh, early in the morning. And I was, you know, while you were watching this report, I was actually, um, you know, having this short snippet with uh, Hira over here as well, where I wanted to talk about uh, Miss Fatima Jinnah. And it's because of the fact that nobody might ever knew that she was a dentist herself. Right. Not just that, Benazir Bhutto happens to be the first ever female prime minister of the Islamic True. countries as well. Because when we speak about the Islamic countries all over the globe, ladies and gentlemen, she was the first ever prime minister. In addition to that, let's talk about the armed forces of Pakistan where they're making sure that women are actually shana bashana right next to men. Right. Feels amazing. Let's talk about our women's cricket team. Let's Sana talk Mir. about let's talk about Sanami. Let's talk about Abda Parveen. Let's talk about Hadika Kiani. Exactly. For all of these people, just because of the fact that they were able to enable other women and people around them is because of the fact that they made sure that they were to get that education. Their parents gave them that education, that right to kind of go out there and pursue their goals. Empowering them, believing in women is very important at the moment. And since Shahzad already spoke about Hadika Fiani, so we should actually appreciate her effort for fulfilling the promise to construct 100 homes in Balochistan for the flood affected people. And now we will be heading towards our guests and I will be introducing... So without any further ado, Hira, if you yeah. don't mind, you know, let me introduce our worthy guests over here, ladies and gentlemen. First off, we're very lucky that we've been joined by because you know, today we have representatives of USAID over here inside our studios and alongside them we have a representative of Higher Education Commission because education plays a very pivotal role, ladies and gentlemen. So we're very lucky that we've been joined by Dr. Shaista Suhail who happens to be Executive Director at HEC. Hello ma'am, Assalamu alaikum, good morning, how are you doing today? Uh, very well. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing the rest of the show. Inshallah, thank you so much for joining us. Wonderful to have you alongside her, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. We are very lucky that we've been joined by somebody who happens to be a media expert. We'll be asking mm -hmm. a lot of questions on what the media really needs to do in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, she happens to be Miss Shahla Rizwan. Hello, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you so much for joining us. Wonderful to have another media expert over here inside the <laughs> studios and alongside her, ladies and gentlemen. We're very lucky that we have been joined by somebody who will be precisely talking about education as well and girls' education in particular. She happens to be Miss Asma Rahman. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum ji. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. I'm fabulous. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. Wonderful to have you on this amazing day. Thank you. So, like my first question is to Ms. Uh, Dr. Shaisa Sohil, since you are the Executive Director mm -hmm. at HSC. Ma'am, uh, what are your thoughts about gender equality and uh, why do we need to empower women? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Hira and Shazad. Uh, gender equality uh, is very important because, uh, uh, first of all, it's economic empowerment, which is the bottom line. Right. And for uh, to generate economic empowerment, uh, we need education. Hmm. And uh, uh, education has played a key role in all the advanced uh, countries where women have been able to secure jobs, they've been able to uh, play a dominant role in their economies. Just right. like you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yes. And similarly, uh, our religion also promotes gender equality. Exactly. Uh, the Holy Prophet Wasallam's wife, Hazrat Khatija, was a great businesswoman. Indeed. And she was doing better than her male counterparts at the time she met the Prophet. She made her own decision to marry him and they had wonderful children. And uh, she uh, did uh, a lot of good because she was economically empowered. Right. And she supported him through thick and thin. Uh, similarly, there were other women uh, also in our history who had done very well. Right. So the point is that we need to provide them with opportunities. True. And that is where the Higher Education Commission comes in. Right. So although uh, uh, it, since its inception in 2002, the Higher Education Commission has been able to uh, take up our statistics, right. but our population growth rate is also uh, you know, a bit <laughs> high. So because of that, we are, although we are creating opportunities, right. but we need to multiply them. Exactly. And we will certainly speak about, you know, different areas where we can actually multiply by public-private okay. partnerships as well. And I'll come back to you. Okay. But very quickly, I would want to move on to Ms. Shella over here as well. Because I would want you to highlight this day. 
Why right. do you think this day is important? Why do you think that International Women's Day really needs to be celebrated? When we celebrate women every single day, I mean, ask me, you know, I celebrate <laughs> my daughters, <laughs> my, my wife, my sisters, my mother every single day. And I'm thankful to Allah Almighty for sending them to me. I mean, I take them as a gift. Why do you think it's important for us to celebrate? Uh, to exactly people out there think what you are thinking. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. This is basically, you know, what we want. You know, every man out there, they should be embracing their children, uh, making them, you know, feel equal. Yep. Uh, rather, they are, you know, girl, boys and third genders. You know, they should be important as they are. Exactly. Right. Because every human being is very important. True. So uh, coming to the International Women's Day and the theme this year that is uh, Embrace Equity. So Embrace Equity basically means that not only we should be feeling that uh, gender are equal, right. but uh, they should be, um, uh, you know, equity as well. People should know their rights. People should uh, know what they want to do and they have the right to do it exactly. and then go for it. And, and you know, in, in this context, I would want to move on to you, Miss Asma, as well, because I think that the most important aspect we are to kind of talk about over here is education. Indeed. Because education has empowered us all to do whatever we are right. striving for today, whatever right. we want to achieve today as well. And when we speak about 22 million children who are out of school, the majority of the population actually consists of the girl right. child as exactly. well. How do you think USAID is actually working to make sure that this ratio is actually going to go down where there are more girl child in right. the school studying, making sure that they are pursuing their goals? Thank you for giving me the opportunity to explain this. USAID uh, has been investing in uh, education sector in Pakistan for a long time. Uh, there is a legacy of USAID investment in education sector in Pakistan. I think you pointed out a very important factor. That a lot of uh, like 22 million children are out of school and the number is increasing because of the inflation, because of the pandemic, because of the, the recent floods. So there are a lot of uh, factors that are contributing towards increase in this number in, and including the population yep. uh, uh, rate. So I think that uh, that is something that all the uh, development partners, as we call ourselves, we are right. the development partners for Pakistan. So we work together uh, with the government of Pakistan to basically see exactly what are the policies, what are the implementation mechanism, what are the systems that need to be strengthened in order to bring these children back to school and retain them in the school and let them complete their primary, wow. secondary education. And especially for girls, because this is such an important area for USAID, USAID truly believes in gender uh, equality and empowerment and uh, equity. So I think this is what uh, we really uh, this is a, this is the area we really care about uh, in all the countries we work in, especially in Pakistan, because this is an, an area for improvement. Uh, and likewise for everybody over here inside Pakistan as well, because we go out in 46 different countries and we solely yeah. thought that, hey, you know what, we really need to celebrate yeah. this day and that to amongst women who are actually contributing towards more women coming out, making sure that they are achieving what they want to do in life. Right. Now, Ms. Um, Ms. Asama Rahman, as you're an education expert and you're working for U.S. for a quite long time. So, like, there are certain uh, provinces in Pakistan, for example, talking about Balochistan and Sindh, mm -hmm. where girls' education is not, uh, you know, up to the mark and they're not given the platform, keeping in view the yeah. gender norms, the gender gap in that province. So, what uh, USAID is actually doing in that regard? So uh, I think it's needless to say that I think a lot of us know this already. There are some provinces that are doing better than others. Right. Mm. Uh, specifically, I think uh, everybody knows that the education indicators or development indicators in general are not very good for Balochistan. True. Are not very good for parts of KP. Gee. Are not very good for good for South Punjab, for example, or Interior Sindh. So these are the areas that uh, we uh, we think that uh, we need to assess. Uh, with the government of Pakistan and the counterparts to s exactly see what are the what are the reasons, what are the type of resources that are needed. For example, it's not always about money. It's not always about funding. It's also about capacity to implement reforms. It's also about uh, the teachers that need to be available. Right. The teacher is a very important ingredient in a classroom. Indeed. They need to be in the classroom present. So teachers availability, teachers training that is important for retention of the children in the school. So I think these are the areas that uh, the, these issues are even more um, exacerbated in the in, in enhanced in those areas where uh, we already do not have enough uh, educated women. Right. So since there are not enough educated women, there won't be enough educated teachers to train teacher to teach in the classroom. So exactly. there is this vicious circle that continues. 
and we are trying to break that circle and, and, uh, and for, in those areas. And for women, and you're very rightful over here, which is why I would want to move on to HEC over here, here as well. So, Dr. Simon, before I move on, obviously, you know, because there's a lesser percentage of women who have actually got the higher education over here in Pakistan, but not. Uh, I'm not going to say that you know it's drastically low, but obviously it's increasing every single day, and we do see that people are coming towards that, and people want their daughters to go, mothers, and everybody to educate themselves. But for once, when you know, if for example we do have those empowered women, then they're not willing to go to interior Balochistan right. or interior Sindh. They're like, hey, you know what? You know, why did I study? Yeah. Uh, if if I actually had to end up to Balochistan or whatnot, how do you think Higher Education Commission can actually help us in this area? where we do have these grievances that you know we certainly do not have a lot of teachers over there mm -hmm. people are not willing to go to make sure that you know they're going to impart that education which they have taken from probably higher education commission or probably any other university how would you refer to that hmm. so uh, i'd just like to quickly share that uh, if you look at the statistics then out of every hundred children who qualify intermediate uh, 11 make it to the higher education sector they find places of, uh, in undergrad uh, programs. And uh, if you look at those statistics, when the Higher Education Commission came into being, there was like 34% uh, of them were women. But today, shukr alhamdulillah, almost 50% are women. Wonderful. And 50% are boys. Right. And then if you look at the toppers, the high achievers, uh, they are also women. Uh, even in the medical sector, the engineering sector, yeah. even at matriculation level, all the top seats are backed by women. I seriously want to have this life, you know, where I just stay at home, you know, people work for me okay. and, you know, I look after my kids and be like, hey, you know what, mazadar life. So, uh, now what are we doing to, you know, capture their services uh, in far-flung areas and all? So, uh, I f strongly feel that not only should they be working, but they can even contribute a lot uh, while sitting at home because uh, the access uh, matters to HEC, access to education, quality of education, relevance of education but to but the market demand. So very, very sorry, I would want to uh, <laughs> you know, intervene over here and, and it's because of the fact that I cannot settle with the statistics you've heard that you know, out of 100, only 11 make it to the universities or right. you know, probably for the graduation programs as well. Don't you think that this is a shortcoming of higher education commission rather than putting it onto people's shoulders? Um, uh, this uh, because somewhere the merits uh, high, uh -huh. somewhere you know there's only one facility where they can only get a certain number or particular yeah. number of students in it as well. And how do you think HEC is working towards that so that you know these statistics? I, I was can just be going to say sure. that when you took the floor, <laughs> sir. I'm sorry. So, uh, <laughs> so the thing is uh, that we are trying to provide access to all of them through uh, online Remote education. Remote learning, right? Uh, through, you know, uh, 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 concepts like Coursera, where people, women who have access to internet and a laptop or a desktop can sit down and uh, learn and even fetch themselves a degree in their own time. So, so that is now the kind of education which is uh, the education of the future. Uh, rather than, you know, because these are the disrupting technologies uh, right. which have now entered the market. Uh, so, while we have invested a lot since the 1960s in brick and mortar universities, they're very important uh, as seats of learning in every district. Uh, at every district level, we are trying to ensure that there is a university. Wonderful. Because the university not only imparts uh, teaching, uh, but it also does carries out a lot of research. It creates knowledge. And all those are very important in the context of the issues being faced by the people. So we have to ultimately bring the socio-economic level of the people to a higher level. And there's a lot of personality development. There's a lot mm -hmm. of characteristics you develop when mm -hmm. you go to universities. And I'll come back to remote learning, but for now, let me say I stand corrected. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. <laughs> I like it. You know, okay. but this debate really needs to be out there so that yes. we can put the right answers out. Right. right. Okay. And now, since we're talking about women working from home, and it's a norm now, I must say. So, Mr. Asama Rahman, since, uh, r sorry, I will Ms. come Shana. to you, yeah, but Shana. I will be talking to Ms. Shaila Rizwan, the media expert. Ma'am, how do you see uh, women working from home, especially in this era, the 21st century we're living in, because it's a modern era, it's very mechanical. Mm -hmm. How do you look forward to that? Uh, so I would say this basically is a opportunity in disguise for many women out there and especially if I talk about you know uh, 
all of those females who have been supported through USAID, you know, right. different grants. Uh, the small grants which we have given, um, they have got the opportunity to work from home for women ships, you know, for uh, home-based businesses, small businesses like, uh, you know, producing makeup, um, organic products, or, uh, you know, many things more, which they have done it very beautifully. And we have so many stories about these females. Can, can you please share one? Sure, you yeah, know, I, uh, with your permission, first of all, I would like to go to, uh, you know, back to the question which sure. Hera basically asked, right. you know, about the females in Balochistan and far flung areas and what USAID is doing. Right. So, apart from, you know, whatever uh, reforms we are working as, and uh, very well said by Asima, you know, about uh, uh, USAID working with the government of Pakistan, right. we are also doing, you know, small projects uh, through very small grants. Uh, you know, in far-flung areas, like for example, in Balochistan, we basically supported a community where out of uh, school children numbers were very high. Right. And uh, it's not about, uh, you know, just uh, like I do agree, there are so many other factors, but there is a very basic factor of changing mindsets. Right. You know, females need support from home, yes. from their fathers, from their community, from the elders, who basically are stopping them from going far and, you know, getting educated. So uh, that was a very exemplary, you know, three schools which we uh, constructed. And then, you know, we made people uh, uh, basically register their out of children's school to come there. And there was a very high ratio of female, uh, you know, small kids right. who were very, uh, you know, excited and emotional when they came back to schools and they started learning. And there are like so many great stories, wow. which are basically on our Facebook page. Anybody can go there and That's see that. That's indeed a wonderful initiative <coughs> taken by the USAID, I must say. Uh, since you were talking about uh, the, there are different other factors in which I believe transportation and long distances is also one of the factors. So exactly. coming back to you, uh, Ms. Uh, um, Asima. Asima Rahman, I want you to highlight uh, these uh, kind of the factors which actually, <coughs> you know, are taking uh, due to which uh, women are unable to, you know, complete their education. I think, uh, thank you. Uh, I think this is a very valid question, very important one. I will also uh, refer back to that first question that was <laughs> asked that why there are not <laughs> enough women in higher education? Right. Because there is not enough supply of basic education, qualified matriculation or FSE pass women who could actually be enrolled in colleges mm. or universities. So agar if, if, if your basic education is not good, if your secondary education is not good, if your high school education is not good, then they're going to drop out. Yeah. So they will never be able to reach the uh, level where well, we we'll actually We really need to kind of qualified. come up with a way where, so you know, we can still include them in our education system. So so the, 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 the point here is that we really uh, improve the system overall. It's not about basic or higher education. It's the whole system that needs, uh, you know, a lot of attention, right. attention <laughs> resources, uh, thought, uh, political willingness. Uh, and all of it. So, uh, so I think that is uh, something that I would say. And and coming back to your question, uh, sorry, uh, if we could uh, just hi rephrase highlight, it. rephrase General it. General factors, the kind of hurdles women are facing to complete the their transportation, exactly. washrooms, yeah. so, so for girls, you know, uh, there are things start from home. You know, not a lot of people uh, prioritize women education or girls education all across Pakistan. You, we know right. that. Return on women's education, return on investment on women education is considered low. Because they get married, they go to another True. family, they do not uh, sort of like invest True. back in their families. The stereotypes so, need to be broken. So exactly. So that stereotype needs to be broken at the family level. Advocacy can be done. Different kind of programs like the, the, the ones through media can be done and can right. educate people at a mass level. Uh, to ta change that mindset. Uh, and also, I think in terms of uh, uh, girls' education, um, there are different factors that contribute to uh, lack of girls' uh, uh, girls attendance in the school or enrollment in the school. A couple of really big factors are the vicinity of how close that school is from the house right. and how All far distances. they have to go. Are they going by foot? Are they walking towards school in the morning? D do the father or the brother has to take them? Like True. the level of effort True. to educate a girl is more on the family side. Exactly. So, so, so that these are the factors that kind of sometimes hinder 
you know uh, the education process. already already troubled or already uh, challenged household would be thinking twice uh, you know in that case but i think we need to address that issue that the, the return on investment on girls is not only economic in return it is also social return because they become mothers and sisters and wives and they're going to support their husbands and they're going to be good mothers so i think the whole uh, sort of like uh, everything the revolves around yes. a, a, around the household right yeah. yes. a household and who runs the household the ecosystem obviously so, runs so, so, uh, so, so. around ladies and gentlemen exactly. of, of obviously the women inside the house as well and thank sure. you very much for saying that that wherever there is more dependency there are more challenges and obviously we certainly need to talk about socio economic conditions of any household over here so i'm going to move on to you miss chell over here that how do you think that you know usaid has been contributing towards those households where obviously their socio economic background is not as such that they can actually afford to kind of send women and while i'm saying this i would want to kind of uh, you know share it with our audiences out there and that is that imagine that the population over in pakistan is now 55% of women and 45% of men and everybody needs to contribute towards the economy of the country because not only the 45% workforce can actually contribute and kind of give you a very developed nation in a country as well so how do you think in this perspective you said is kind of contributing from people from lower socio economic backgrounds unfortunately sure so uh, usaid uh, you know ensures that in their programming while the design is made uh, you know and it's always you know design in close collaboration with government of pakistan uh, the factor is to have to the maximum possible 50% female participation in every you know mm -hmm. uh, programming whether it's agriculture education health you know uh, governance everything regardless we you know try to make it uh, you know or implement it to the maximum possible and then there are opportunities for females as asma mentioned there are scholarships there are like you know uh, health facilities there are uh, so many other things which are there you know small grants for entrepreneurship jobs you know and so many more uh, but the change you know as you mentioned before the change is coming but the change is very slow, slow. but you know the good thing is it's steady so uh, and that uh, you know for that we uh, as media uh, you know experts, experts. Yeah. we basically um, you know work on certain things to create awareness and then provoke interest so people can do the actions right. for example for the girls education you know last year we basically launched a song you know using um, a, 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 uh, one of our cricketer celebrities to talk about uh, girls education and directly you know uh, addressing men that they should be taking the action yan you know Uh, exactly. bringing their children supporting to supporting women in all fields yeah yes and everybody yes. needs to contribute in this way as well and in addition to that ladies and gentlemen because you know so now i'm actually going to change the course of the conversation over so imagine that now when we speak about uh, for example hira happens to be a wonderful colleague paid gets paid equally you know so so i'm not <laughs> higher paid or lower paid right. we get paid equally i yeah. think we get the same treatment we get the same leaves everything is the same and that's what we are asking for you know because that's something which will give them an enabling environment to do better but now you know i'm i'm going to change the course of conversation so usa thank you so much for contributing towards women empowerment equality or gender equality if you are to speak about it and since we are speaking about it on international women's day now doc saiba you know it is for all of you to answer take your turns we have another 10 minutes to talk about it and that is that you know now there is a debate in in the west and that is that you know there are two mindset obviously then we do have feminists who are very against this mindset right. of trad wives so imagine mm -hmm. that you know that trad wives is actually derived from traditional wives that now there is a group of women within their society and community in the west who say that you know us being at home does not mean that we are not empowered us you know making sure that we are going to enable our husband to go achieve his mm -hmm. goals make sure that you know that this is our goal and we are really happy doing that and now a lot of people are kind of alluding to it where they say now the research from oxford university came out which said that you know that uh, women who actually had a very egalitarian attitude that they wanted to be equal would have more disagreements than women who actually understood their role that you know okay that my choice is to serve my family my kids mm -hmm. and be there so where do you think that we find that right balance in between do you think that the trad wife concept is great do you think that just working women is great or do you think both the genders really need to work together okay th thank you so much for that very interesting question 
so if we look at uh, Pakistani traditional housewives, <coughs> more and more of them are into certain businesses uh, staying at home. Uh, they have opened boutiques, uh, they're, they're you know, cooking meals, uh, sending them out to shops. And at uh, all uh, socioeconomic strata, they have these, uh, you know, even the women uh, in the lower uh, income groups, they go out, they work in uh, homes and they come back. So they are economically empowered. True. And that helps a lot. While uh, I think most of the wives, even in the bureaucracy, uh, the even the women civil servants, and mind you, a number of them are now, the, their numbers also increasing. Uh, so they are also maintaining uh, their family lives uh, oh very right. happily with along with the job. So yeah. I think uh, more and more the focus is on how to, uh, you know, like you said, balance uh, the family life and the office because both life. You know, uh, the partners, both the partners can actually do it equally as well. You know, it's mm -hmm. not that that one has to do it and we're yes. not imposing that as well. Absolutely. That it's, it is Sharing the only women's role. Equally. Yes, that's yes. what it is. And thank you so much for mm -hmm. such a sensible answer. Let mm -hmm. me move on to Ms. Shella over here. So Ms. Shella, traditional wives, against people or women who just want to just go out there work and mm -hmm. you know things can be done smartly because now I mentioned over here that Alhamdulillah all my sisters work right but what they've done is that they certainly have made sure that okay for what of all of those problems which are being created while they're not at home that they fix them in a very smart way you know all you need to do is have another person there you know who's actually doing all, all of that work to, to so, so that you don't have to do it where, where are you on this when we speak about traditional wives and you know how uh, women who are actually more of an egalitarian attitude say that you know that we had more disagreements rather than women who thought that okay they are empowered in doing what they wanted to do while staying at home. So um, you know um, I would say uh, that the females should have the choice yes. to uh, do whatever they want to do. Wonderful. Right. right. You know uh, if uh, you ask me personally I wanted to be uh, you know, a housewife. Wow. <laughs> but I ended up, you know, <laughs> working. Jahan bhi zindhi le jai. Jahan bhi le jai. Alhamdulillah. So, but, uh, you know, I would say uh, the choice r should remain, you know, uh, certainly with the person, with the individual. So, uh, you know, uh, if they want to focus on house, you know, household, everything else. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, by being, uh, you know, this much, uh, it doesn't mean that you don't want to empower them or mm. give them education mm. or you know uh, keep them away from any of the basic facilities so that is their right they should have it so i would say you know let them uh, you know stay free and uh, with that Decide i will just themselves. yeah and i would just quote uh, you know our uh, drama uh, you know <laughs> one tagline yeah. uh, which i love the most Sarira. is uh, yeah this uh, drama sarira Sabha but Kamba, you you've been absolutely <laughs> stunning in that character driving that cab around you're changing those norms wonderful but if you remember the tagline says urja be fikar urja be fikar so uh, urja be fikar is Main basically the tagline <laughs> 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 i think that's wonderful please miss asma <laughs> What about you? What's your take on this? I think I'll just uh, say what Shella said. I think it's 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 about choice. If a couple decides that uh, they work in a certain manner, uh, and nobody is uh, you know uh, suppressing other person's desires or potential to achieve their dreams and goals, uh, I think that that re really is between the couple. I exactly. mean, if somebody Keeping decides that they, yeah. if the wife decides she wants to stay at home, sure, stay at home. Yeah. But I would also like to say that if all the women stay at home but keep so so one thing keep that in mind that uh, on the places and on the, in the institutions where there will be policy making you will be absent as a woman true, true. who will That's take true. care of your perspective as a woman because if everybody wants to stay at home right. fine if you want to take care of your family perfect but keep that in mind that you are absent from a table where then the policy policy is being made. Who's going to speak on your behalf? That's true, and that's true. But and you know, so I'm very glad that you actually spoke about it because now it just popped up in my mind. And that is why do you think that women really needs to be a part in the upper house on the lower house uh, on reserved seats? Why don't you think that they really need to come out there and contest elections just like everybody else does? Because we were talking about equality over here. So yeah. why do you think that some should be given an opportunity? on preference basis that hey you know what we have these 10 20 seats reserved for women right. and we can right. actually suggest who's going to sit over there and speak about policy making right. because 
policies for people like you and me, right? We should be the ones deciding, deciding whether who exactly. needs to sit there. What's your take on this? So my take is that, you know, if, you, if uh, there's a term called affirmative action, if you yes. know that, right? That means that if historically uh, some uh, group of people have been uh, not part of uh, something or some sort of discussion, you intentionally bring them into that discussion. That's why you create quotas, right? That's why you create women quotas. Yeah. You make sure that their participation is there. But it's not, it shouldn't be limited to that. True. So if more women want to participate in politics, which they totally should, True. Uh, and, and the country will be much better uh, in terms of policy <laughs> and in terms of having uh, worldwide less wars probably, uh, less, nuclear, More peaceful less nuclear wars, I hope, you know, <laughs> if the women heads are there at, at the state level, they, we have wonderful examples where women have led countries, True. very developed countries. And Jacinda Ardern, we've been uh, as Bhutto Saiba over and, here And, and Germany's, well. yes. uh, you know. Uh, Angela Merkel. Exactly. So, you know, there, there have been it's so many examples. And they've been instrumental so and they've been out there and they've always made sure, ladies and gentlemen, that they're going to strive for the excellence that exactly. their country deserves. So very quickly towards the end, Dr. Saiba, I would want you to kind of wrap it up for us. Give out a strong message to the rest of the world. We go out in 46 different countries. So whatever you say today is going to matter for the coming years. Let's mm -hmm. go. Well, uh, uh, I'd like to say that we as families need to participate in and uh, encourage women and our young girls to become fully educated and empowered and to contribute in their own household economies as well as in the country's economy. Oh, that's wonderful. Ms. Shala, mm -hmm. what about you? I would basically say that uh, we talk about mm -hmm. so many, you know, famous women, all of the mentors, mm -hmm. uh, excellent people around us. But let's take a moment and talk about the unsung heroes, True. the champions right. who are there back in every house. Exactly. True. So uh, they must be celebrated. Exactly. So day and every is yours. single day, every single day they must be celebrated. Ms. <laughs> Asma, what about you? What's your message today? So my message to all the women is that invest in your growth, invest in yourself, do not give up on your dreams and potential. And, and, and you know, you, this is one life. So, you know, make the maximum out of it and you know work for your family work for your country do whatever you, you have feel. a lot to contribute exactly so do whatever you feel like so very quickly towards the end Hira what do you want to say today so I'm very honored and privileged that I was surrounded by these amazing wonderful women who have shared Thank their you. views with us and definitely we need more women representation in the top offices and because women can relate their problems equally as men can relate their problems. So uh, my message on this International Women's Day is that empower women, believe in them and support them. Exactly, which is why ladies and gentlemen, towards the end, there's only one last thing which I would say and that is that, you know, the last time I had a woman boss, was the last time that uh, there was an increase in my salary. Right. <laughs> so I think I'm all for women bosses as well. For everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, look after yourselves. Please make sure that there are equal opportunities for both the genders please make sure that's the only message because this day is for everybody it's not leaving one gender behind we really need to work together to make sure that we kind of contribute towards the prosperity of our uh, economy of the country and we make sure that we educate our women our girl child as well because the future generations future is dependent on how you educate your girl until next time look after yourselves one two three good morning have a great day